We know that managing the wrists throughout the golf swing is vital if you're going to become a consistent player. And one of the positions that we can really study the wrists quite clearly is at the top of the backswing as the club's changing direction and beginning to move down. There'd be a range of different wrist positions that you'd typically see at the top. And today I'm going to share with you the potential benefits of getting this right, as well as the inherent dangers and damage that you're going to cause to your golf swing if you get the wrist angles wrong. The exact position of the wrists at the top of the swing can vary slightly from player to player. And some, some of that is down to how you grip the club, meaning the more you turn your hands to the right and position the lead wrist into this extremely extended or cupped position at the setup, the more likely you are to demonstrate more of that extension at the top. And similarly, if you moved your hands to the other end of the spectrum, where the lead hand was turned more to the left, with the top hand also on top of the shaft a little bit more, this lead hand setting up with a bit more flexion in it is going to typically demonstrate a little bit more of that flexion at the top. So we need to take into account how you grip the club before we prescribe exactly what the top of the backswing position should look like. But given a seemingly more or less neutral grip, the following would be something that we would strive for. Swinging to the top, the top of the swing here, the left wrist would be flat. That would demonstrate the back of the hand and the forearm in a similar line. And as we do that, you'll also notice that the club face is on a similar line as well. So it's matching the angle of the back of my lead wrist and the club face look the same. If I was to take that same grip and move to the top and add too much extension, extension would be this twisting or cupping of the lead wrist. That's going to move the club face into a very different position. Now the toe of the club face is pointing more down towards the ground. That's an opening mechanism. That's twisting or spinning this club face open and would be consistent with the highest handicap golfers. So we've seen through the studies done that poorer golfers, the higher your handicap, the more extension you're adding during your backswing. And that's because extension, as I've already touched on, is an open club face that would tend to lead to weak shots that go to the right and loss of distance. On the other side of the spectrum, you'd see wrists that were flexed or bowed as it's sometimes described. The back of the wrist is now arched and now my club face looks very different again. This time the face of the club is pointing much more up to the sky. This type of wrist condition has become more popular and more, more well known due to PGA Tour players like Dustin Johnson and Colin Morikawa who both demonstrate quite a significantly bowed wrist. Just as the extended lead wrist I demonstrated a minute ago opens the club face, a more bowed or flexed lead wrist closes the club face. That would tend to create impact alignments that are more preferable. You can lean the shaft forward, you can use your body rotation more, and would tend to help golfers make better contact. Definitely add potential power to the swing as well. So when looking for where you are at the top of the swing, We'll start with a flat lead wrist as being desirable and then we can work back from there depending on your ball flight. And while I've already mentioned that there's no perfect wrist position at the top, we can take the hack motion wrist sensor and measure what's really going on at the wrist level to see the patterns that were demonstrated by better players. First of all, I would say that at setup, a neutral grip a grip that's fairly close to neutral would have a small amount of extension in this lead wrist, meaning the wrist doesn't start out completely flat. There's a slight cupping or an extension to it. When I grip the club, I have around 20, just 20, 21 degrees of extension there. And what you'll see in the best players is that between setup and the top of the swing, they definitely don't add more extension. And in many cases, the better players take some of that extension out. So if I go ahead and make a normal backswing, get to the top at 23, 24 degrees at setup and stop, you'll see at the top of my backswing, my wrist is now 10, 11, 12 degrees flexed. So there's a 30 degree change in the amount of flexion and extension in this lead wrist during the backswing. That, as I say, would be typical of the better player. 
they would lose the extension during the backswing and get to the top where this wrist is in a slightly flexed condition or a much flatter condition than where it started. Conversely, the highest handicap golfers, the data shows that not only do they start with the extension, they end up adding extension during the backswing. That's a big no-no in terms of good golf. So once again, if I start there with 20, 21, 22, 23 degrees of extension, but by the time I get to the top of the swing, I'm now in 26 degrees. I've added more extension than I had at the beginning. That's going to open the club face as we've already discussed and create a number of problems that you're going to encounter in the downswing. More extended lead wrist is a more open club face. A more open club face tends to create a steeper shaft coming down and as you're reaching impact the golfer will tend to stand up and early extend where the body has to stall and lots of flipping has to occur in order to hit somewhat of a functional shot. That's just too difficult to time and too difficult to coordinate over a period of time. So if you want to improve your golf, you want to start by getting your wrist angles correct. And at the top, finding a flat lead wrist can be hugely beneficial in terms of getting this club into the right position coming down with the club face already aligned correctly, allowing you to keep turning through this ball, and maintain much better body angles and structure as you do so. So getting the lead wrist correct at the top can have enormous benefits as, how you, as to how you bring this club back to the ball. If you don't have access to a hack motion and you can't measure what your wrist is doing, we can do this simple drill using a credit card, a plastic card in the back of your glove that you slide down this lead wrist. This will help you to feel when you're extending the wrist too much because as you do so, the back of the card, the plastic will dig slightly into your forearm. So keeping the card slid under the back of your glove and maintaining a flat wrist would involve the card not touching your forearm at all. So setting up, I'll feel that the card's just very, very slightly into my forearm because of that small amount of extension that I talked about. But what you can do as you swing back, and you can do this slowly just to check, is to just try and maintain a very small gap between the card and the forearm throughout the entire backswing. And as you get to the top, if you manage to do that, you'll see how this wrist, the glove, the card and the arm are more lined up. I've got this nice neutral wrist condition. So we can go ahead and practice that, really get a feeling of twisting the wrist in both directions to get a feeling of what too open or extended would feel like, as well as something that would be the opposite. Because very often when you're practicing a change in your wrists, it's useful to go to the other extreme of what you're currently doing. So I'm gonna hit one, keeping the credit card off my wrist, get that feel in the backswing, nice flat wrist at the top. And go ahead and hit one. So there's a really simple drill you can do to help you feel the different wrist mechanics at the top of the backswing. If you enjoyed that drill, then why don't you click on the link in the description that will take you to more drills you can do to improve your overall wrist mechanics.